everybody, it's Gary Wilson from Great Lakes Now, and we're reporting this morning from the Chicago Water Summit on the campus of the University of Illinois. Great Lakes Now is pleased to welcome Maud Barlow to our site. Maud Barlow is a world-renowned water expert and chairperson of the Council of Canadians, Canada's leading social justice advocacy group. Her resume is too long to detail here, but it includes advising the United Nations on the issue of water as a human right. Her latest book is Boiling Point, Government Neglect, Corporate Abuse, and Canada's Water Crisis. Mark Barbo, welcome. Thank you. I'm pleased to be here. Let's start with Boiling Point. On the back cover in large type are the words, we are complacent, in quotes, uh, and referring to how Canadians view the fact that Canada has 20% of the world's fresh water. Briefly describe that complacency. Well, in my country, and I think it's true for parts of the United States, although less so now because so many Americans are, are in series of, you know, situation of drought. But we grew up with this mythology that we had all this water, that we were about lakes and rivers, like that, that is who we are. It's in our songs and in our stories and so on. Um, but it's really a myth because we only, I mean, 20% of the world's water, you'd have to drain every lake and river to, and, you know, you'd be a desert to get that 20%. We have about 6.5% of the available fresh water. So the information that we all grew up with was wrong. And I think that's the di distinction that if you don't want to draw down the, the you know, the, the source itself, you need to stay within the bounds of, of what you can use that's, that's not going to harm the ecosystem itself. Most of those rivers, by the way, run north in mighty rivers, most of that water. So we don't even really have that much for those of the, the majority of us who live in the southern part of Canada. And we don't take care of our water. We're, we're, the complacency led to a thinking that, well, take what you want. And there's so much groundwater, who cares how much you take or who cares what you dump in it? Uh, because there's so much. I mean, we we're awash in water, so it just, it wasn't in the, it was in the consciousness to love it, but not in the consciousness to understand its fragility. Do you see that uh, same complacency in the U.S.? In parts of the U.S. It depends where you live. I mean, if you're going down to Florida now, and we have Canadians who go, you know, snowbirds, they call them, they're saying it's the worst, the worst drought they can ever remember. Of course, we all know what California's gone through and what Texas is going through. So I think it depends on where you live. Certainly around the Great Lakes, there's that myth of abundance. There's no question. I mean, you look at one of these lakes, especially since we've had a lot of rain around the lakes. We've had flooding in Ontario and Quebec still. Um, so there, there, it's hard to understand when you're dealing with a crisis when you're looking at these magnificent lakes, right? Uh, but we need to put that, you need to have them you know, the, the bird's eye view kind of thing, looking down and saying, yes, there might be that water here, but look at the desperate need. And I quoted in my talk today, as you know, that the United Nations is saying the demand for water far outstrips the supply and it's getting worse, not better. They say that by 20, well, within the next 50 years, as many as 7 billion people could be seriously affected by the water crisis. Wow. So it's not something for us to be complacent about, no matter where we live or what water heritage we have. Well, speaking of that complacency, in the U.S. and in the Great Lakes region in the last two years, we've had two drinking water crises, yes. and I'm referring to Toledo and Flint, uh, different, different causes, but uh, there nonetheless. Uh, have we properly dealt with those? Have we remedied the cause? Or are those in the rearview mirror now and uh, everything's going to be okay? No, I don't think there's any evidence to say that Lake Erie is safe again. I mean, you know that years ago, during the 60s and 70s, there was a concerted effort to clean Lake Erie up and a great deal of progress was made. Uh, but now the, you know, the, the eutrophication and nutrient overload is back into that lake. We'll see. Perhaps it won't be that bad this summer, hopefully. And I know there are... Uh, there have been agreements on both sides of the border to try to cut that nutrient overload down, but boy, it's a, you know, I'm, just go back to my side of the country, uh, my side of the Great Lakes, we have no laws against, uh, around the disposal of, of animal waste. We have pretty strict laws around human waste, but, you know, so it's kind of up to the farmers themselves or the industrial farms themselves that they're going to dump their stuff into the into the water. So no, in the case of Lake Erie and, and others, I would say no. In the case of Flint, it's just an appalling situation and the government continues to evade and, 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 and not understand the serious nature of what happened there. The children are drinking lead, they're going to be affected for the rest of their lives from what they're, t they're, they're ingesting. And I know there's lead in the pipes in, in many other cities 
uh, around the Great Lakes and in the United States. And this is just simply not acceptable in any way, shape, or form. Uh, on to one of your favorite topics, or least favorite topics, and that's uh, bottled water and uh, yes. Nestle in this case. Uh, Nestle right now is asking for to take more water uh, in the, for the plant uh, near Macosta, Michigan. Uh, as you've articulated many times, Nestle pays very little for the water it takes. And at the same time, cities, uh, post-industrial cities like Flint and Detroit and others uh, are threatened with water shutoffs. Is that an inequity that we just have to live with or is there a remedy to it? We absolutely should not live with that kind of inequity. This is the perfect example of where the human right to water is being violated. It is, an, it is an absolutely essential right that has been recognized by the United Nations General Assembly, has been recognized by every country in the world now, including the United States. And basically what it says is that the government is responsible for providing clean, accessible, affordable water to all of its citizens. That is as clear as a bell in the resolution that has been adopted. It also says governments are responsible not to allow a third party or even government, corporations or, or mines or whatever, to pollute the drinking water, the source of drinking water for people. So it's like they're, 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 the violation in, in, in the United States and many other places is absolutely blatant. So when you see people who live right on these Great Lakes being denied water coming out of their taps. It's just appalling. Well, well, a company like Nestle gets to take all the water it wants and pay nothing because they claim that they've created a few jobs and they ship it all over the place. They do not return it. If you live here, you, you know, you're using the water, but it comes back. But if you're, if you're Nestle, you're, you're consuming the water. You're taking the water away. Um, so this is an inequity that absolutely has to be put out there and we absolutely have to say that this is not acceptable and of course there are solutions. We should not be giving these companies access to raw water no matter what they pay. If we have clean, safe water coming out of our taps, there's no place for bottled water. If we don't have clean, safe water coming out of our taps, we should and that's, th that's what we should be working towards. We've only got a minute or so left, but I have to ask you about uh, the Canadian view of, uh, of the Trump administration so far. Yeah. Uh, you worked, uh, do, you did your work uh, for nine years under the Harper administration, yeah. Stephen Harper, who I think it's fair to say was not the uh, biggest uh, uh, environmental supporter. He was, what, all, what he, he was terrible. I mean, he, he fired as many scientists as he could. He shut down all the research institutes. He called environmentalist terrorists. He gutted the water laws. He took us out of the Kyoto Accord. He was awful, and we, we outlived him. And this is what I want to say to my American friends. Trump does not own the United States. He cannot change the essential character of this country. He's in here for, I guess, the next four years, or three and a half, or whatever. He will be gone one day. You will get your country back. Meanwhile, stay hopeful, be nice to each other, be kind to each other, because it's going to be a rough ride. Don't lose sight of the values that, that made this country great. Maud Bartle is chairperson of the Council of Canadians and author of Boiling Point, Government Neglect, Corporate Abuse, and Canada's Water Crisis. For Great Lakes Now, I'm Gary Wilson.